Hi everybody, I'm Mike McCrory and this is Would You Make It? Sergei Efimov is a Russian designer, Russian inventor, and he contacted me a few months ago after watching a few of my videos and he suggested that I try making one of his stool designs. He has a whole series of stools that he's designed. So in this video I'm going to make his three-legged stool. This is the finished product right here. It's a pretty innovative design. It's just three legs and it's designed in a way that it's easy to disassemble so that it can be transported. So you could use it for camping, take it on a picnic or, or whatnot. And the way you disassemble it is just lift it up and the legs fall out. To put it back together, just flip it over. Insert the legs one at a time. And then flip it back over. So I'm going to make Sergei's three-legged stool in this video. So let's get started. To cut the seat into a circle, I'm going to create a template. The seat has a diameter of 333 millimeters, so I'm setting the compass to be 166 millimeters for the radius of the circle. After drawing the circle, I'll drill a hole into the center of the board and then I'll mount it to another board with a bolt through the center of it. This allows it to rotate so that I can cut the circle on the bandsaw. I'm going to cut into the bottom board so that the blade is next to the bolt. Then I will clamp the board to the table of the bandsaw. And then I will rotate the MDF so that it's cut into a circle. I'm cutting this just outside the line, almost on the line, but just outside the line, and then I can clean it up on the sander. Now I could sand right to the pencil line, and that will give me a nice clean circle. Now I'm taking a piece of Baltic birch plywood, and I'm going to use this to cut the seat. Um, I'm going to cut it into a square, and then I will use the template to cut the circle. First, I'm going to trace the circle around the template, and then on the bandsaw, I will cut outside the line, leaving a little bit of leftover material so that I can then clean it up using a router bit. Now when I'm cutting, I'm careful to stay far enough away from the line so that I don't cross over it or cut into it. And now using double-sided tape, I'm going to mount the template to the seat. I'm using a flush trim bit with a bearing that is typically on the bottom of the bit, but because the router is inverted, now the bearing is at the top. And the bearing rides against the template so that I get a perfect circle when I'm finished. And now I'm using a quarter inch round over bit. What I want to do now is find the center of the circle, which is going to be here somewhere. The reason I want to do that is from the center, I need to draw another circle that I'm going to use to find the center points for each of the three mortises that I'm going to cut through the seat. There are several methods you can use to find the center of a circle. You can use a compass and draw a bunch of arcs. You can draw a couple of chords, but the difficulty with that method is that the two chords need to be absolutely parallel, and that's a little bit difficult sometimes. So what I'm going to do is use a method that uses three chords. I would have been smarter to do this before I rounded over the edge, so I'm going to have to eyeball it a little bit. I'm going to draw the three chords that are 10 inches each. It's important that each one be exactly the same length. I'll draw this one across and I'll mark the midpoint at 5 inches. Then I'll turn this around. It doesn't really matter where I draw them as long as they're the same length where they intersect the edges of the circle. Again, I mark 5 inches. And I'll just draw the third one over here. And then from those midpoints, I'm going to draw a line that's perpendicular from that chord. And where those three lines intersect, it will be the center. So 
so there's the center right there. I used some math to figure out the length of each side of the equilateral triangle that will be inscribed in the circle with a radius of 116 millimeters, and it works out to be 201 millimeters. So I'll mark a point here, and another one here, and then I'll join those three midpoints together. I'm going to use these lines of the triangle to lay out the mortises. So one is going to lay this way. One is going to be oriented this way, and one will be oriented this way. Each mortise is going to be 45 millimeters long. So I'm going to measure these out carefully. I'll put the center point at 22 millimeters, and I'll mark from the end to 45. Now I'll mark them all out and each one will be 45 millimeters long and 18 millimeters wide. 18 millimeters is the thickness of the Baltic birch plywood. And I'm gonna mount this clamp onto this piece of plywood and I'm going to use that to hold down the seat on the drill press when I'm drilling the mortises. I was just about ready to cut the mortises when I realized that I made a mistake. I marked out the mortises to be 45 millimeters to match the width of the leg, but then I realized that the leg is inserting at a 60 degree angle, so it's not this width that I need to mark the mortises to, it's this width. So I did a little bit of math and this works out to be 52 millimeters. So I'm going to remark the mortises and then I can begin cutting. Now the legs are gonna be at an angle of 60 degrees, so I'm going to rotate the drill press table to 30 degrees. A problem I ran into was the seat was obstructed by the column at the back of the drill press, so I couldn't get the outline of the mortise lined up with the mortising bit, so I had to change my plan. It was easy enough to do by turning the seat around, but then I had to change the angle to be 30 degrees in the opposite direction. It was going to be fairly easy to cut the mortises. The challenge, though, was to get everything lined up. I really could have used a third hand to help me to hold the piece and to clamp it in place. This job was a little bit tedious, but it wasn't that big of a deal because I only had three mortises to cut. It was really important, though, that I drilled very carefully to make sure everything was lined up. It was very important to make sure that everything was perfectly lined up, otherwise I was not going to get a straight mortise. I wanted to have the, the cleanest possible mortise because it's not that easy to chisel plywood. Well, the first mortise is done and it looks pretty good. Now the second mortise is finished and it's on to the third and final mortise.
And now I just did a light sanding to remove all of the outline marks that I had to put onto the seat. And a little bit of hand sanding as well to clean up the edge. Now it's time to cut the legs and I'm ripping these pieces of plywood to be just a little bit less than 45 millimeters so that it won't be too tight of a fit. And now to cut the ends of the legs, I'm setting my miter gauge at a 30 degree miter and I'll make the first cut and then I will rotate the miter gauge to be 30 degrees in the opposite direction to cut the other end off. I've marked the end of each leg to be careful that I cut it in the proper direction. And now it's time to test the fit. It was pretty easy to insert the legs. Um, the mortises were pretty clean and I didn't have to do any trimming at all. It's pretty sturdy. Any downward pressure on the seat applies pressure to the legs that are in the mortise to make sure that they don't slide out. And now I'll just apply a little bit of tongue oil to finish it up. So this is the finished product. It, it really is an innovative design and it doesn't cost a lot to make. It's just Baltic birch plywood that I've cut out. In fact, this was a scrap piece that I had left over from another project. So it really didn't cost me anything at all to make this. Uh, it does take a little bit of effort because you have to cut out the mortises and that's a little bit tricky. But apart from that, it's pretty straightforward. So I gotta ask, would you make it?